Peace of the Lord be with you, and good morning. This is our devotion for Wednesday, April 6th, and um, our reading for today is Zechariah 9, 9 through 12, uh, which includes the portion um, reference that it talks about in the Gospel lesson on Monday, and I'll be getting this out in the morning, so we'll follow the morning order, page 295 in the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right, Zechariah 9, beginning at verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from ba Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant, well, covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Let us pray. Blessed Lord Jesus, you are our King who comes to us righteous and having salvation. You are the King who is humble. And in your work of peace, you have cut off the chariot and the war horse and the battle bow, and you speak peace to the nations. We thank you for that peace, the peace that we have with God because of your sacrifice for us. And we thank you for your rule from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. And that um, because of the blood of your covenant, you set us free from the waterless pit of our sin, and you return us to you, who are our, our stronghold, and you make us prisoners of hope, promising to restore to us double in your great mercy. We grant that you would bless us. We pray that, we pray that you would grant us to um, always live in the, the uh, trust of those promises, and the hope that is ours in you, as you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, so, um, you know, obviously we've got the, the beginning of this passage here, which is that, um, you know, the, that, that portion that was, that was quoted, and it's that reference to Jesus coming to Jerusalem and the, the triumphal entry. And, um, you know, I was reading, I took some time to read Luther on this, um, just because, you know, as you read things from the... The, especially the, the, the prophets, right, the major and minor prophets, um, you know, there, there's a lot of, there's a, a lot to those. And, I'm, and I touched on that, you know, with uh, the reference to Isaiah in, in, the, um, in the gospel lesson, you know, how it said, uh, oh, hear, O daughters of Zion, right? You know, the, um, let me, let me say this. So say to the daughter of Zion, right? Now, of course, as we say this, you have here rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Right, so it's not like it's a totally, um, it's a totally clear reference to to that passage in Isaiah. But you've got this sort of overlap between the two, and I and I talked about that. How we get this conflation then with all of that um, that you get? Are we talking about the question of are we talking about the first coming or the second coming? That sort of thing, and and this this really continues in that same vein. Are we talking about the first coming or the second coming? And, uh, and again, we don't want to draw too clear of a line between those. Um, we do need to make the point that there is this first coming that is where God, uh, where, where Christ accomplishes our salvation. And then uh, the second coming is when he brings that salvation to us personally. Um, but this is, you know, so this is kind of all of that together, right? The, uh, so this is, as Luther spoke of, he said, you know, this is the, the kingdom of Christ coming spiritually, not with, with power. Now, when he comes at the end of time, there will be that coming with power, right? It will be coming, it will be a coming in majesty and, and glory. And, um, you know, but for, for what we see here, it's this, this humility. And um, so, so that's, a, you've got that, that, that tie there. Uh, the, the, he came in, once he came in, uh, w w how does the hymn go? Once, once he came in, in, in blessing, um, you know, and, and he'll come again in glory. That's, uh, gosh, anyway. <laughs> so, um, 
to look at the passage. So rejoice, so great, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. Is he humble and mounted on a donkey on a colt, the foal of a donkey? So here's this emphasis on the humility of this coming. And, and what we see uh, within this um, is that he accomplishes that salvation. When he does this, he's giving us a glimpse of, of his kingdom. Now, as we, we understand that he will come with power and glory and majesty, when he does that, all of these other things will also be accomplished. In, in a way, we get a picture of what that looks like with his first coming, though. With him coming in that humility. With him, um, you know, when he, when he dies on the cross and, and rises again, he wins the victory without the use of, of swords or violence on his part or, um, or, 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 or power. You know, he actually does this in weakness. And, and that's how amazing God is. His power is made perfect in weakness. As he, as he says to Paul in, in, in 2 Corinthians 12, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So there's this, this, this weakness that he has that accomplishes power. You know, when we, think of, um, when we think of accomplishing rule in earthly terms, we think of it in, in, in terms of, of power and, and one power overpowering another power, right? Um, and how you do that? Well, you do that with war. And you do that with, with an exertion of that power. Uh, but that's not what we see in Christ is then that, that is no more. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, the war horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow should be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nations. Um, you know, all that's going to be gone. All that conflict, all that, that power struggle will be gone. And I, I often say this, that, you know, we, we, we frame so much in terms of power in our time. And, and, that, and that makes sense because when you take God out of the picture as we have, and when you take him out from understanding that he is, he is the one who is in power, then of course everything boils down to humanity trying to have power, humans having, try, trying to have power over other humans, right? Um, but for God, what is that, right? Uh, you know, he has to kind of laugh about that for us. Yeah, he, like he's worried about that, you know, because he, he already has it. It's all his. Uh, so, so in any case, uh, in view of that, his rule then shall be from sea to sea uh, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Uh, now, as we, as we say that, I want to check something real quick. Um, you know, uh, let's see here. His rule, and Christ rules universal, not limited geographical boundaries, such as earthly kingdoms. We are beat to be his witnesses to the end of the earth. Uh, I was looking because it says from the river to the ends of the earth. I was going to see if I could get a little bit of insight into what that river is in particular because it's actually capitalized here. So I, I'm not sure uh, if it's, in any case, it's could be maybe the Jordan River because you have Israel framed by that and their kingdom. I, I, I am not sure. Um, but in any case, so then, uh, also for you, as for you also because of the blood of my covenant, I will set prisoners free from the waterless pit. So we think about God's rule, of course, we think about the, the, the rule of the dominion of the evil one that we live under and how we are drawn from the, that tyrannical kingdom to the kingdom and the rule of our Lord, which is in that freedom. And it's in the blood of the covenant of Christ. You know, we are freed from sin, death, and the devil in this work of, of apparent weakness on the cross by which God overcomes and wins the victory in all things and brings us by the blood of that covenant, by the forgiveness of sins. Life is in the blood, so the blood is shed. He dies. The wages of sin is death, and he brings us to new life in his resurrection then, where we are set free from the waterless pit. Um, now, that's, uh, of course, that's a reference to hell. Uh, you know, you think about waterless pit, as it says in, in, the, in the note here, that symbolizes the hopeless condition of one under the curse of the law, when we are under that curse of the law, when we hear "Do this and you will live," and we don't do it, there is a loss of hope. And you think about being in a, in a waterless place, parched, dying of thirst. Right? Uh, think about the Israelites in the wilderness; they're parched, they're ready to die. And what does God do? Moses strikes the rock, and He gives them water. And Paul says that rock is Christ. Right? Um, the one giving us water in a waterless place. I also think about. The, the we had the, the the casting out of demons a couple weeks ago, um, and the strong man and the stronger man, right? Where it says, well, the the de you cast out the demon and it'll go to the waterless place. You know, the, the association of 
that with hell and the, and, and, and the sort of that sort of thing. Um, in any case, but we're freed from that. We're, we're given that hope in Christ. Uh, and so what do we do? We return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Uh, Christ is our stronghold. The mighty fortress is our God. There, there's our stronghold. So we return to him as prisoners of hope. Uh, what, a, what a wonderful thing to be imprisoned to, to be imprisoned to hope, uh, because hope does not put us to shame, as it says in, in Romans 5. Uh, you know, uh, we rejoice in our sufferings because suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame as it's been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Uh, so we are prisoners of hope. Today I declare to you that I will restore to you double. Uh, as I read that, uh, in the place of despair, the Lord promises a double blessing, a secure stronghold and victory over all enemies. Uh, Luther interpreted that, uh, you know, so we get this, this stronghold in God and victory over our enemies. Uh, Luther interpreted it to be the, the double hope of, or the double um, restoration of, of uh, being out from under the curse of the law and the curse of sin itself, right? So law and sin, um, secure stronghold, victory over enemies. You know, that's it, we, we know that this is a good thing that God has given us because of that blood of Christ, who is the humble servant rescuing us in his life, death, and resurrection. Amen. We continue with the, uh, with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.